Here we go. <laughs> I, you know, it's just hard, hard for me to believe this. I mean, here we are. We've been together, most of us, maybe not all of us. We had new people coming in every day. We have been together in this 71 days. Now, actually, it's longer than that because most of us went into quarantine about 77 days ago, 78 days ago. It took me about a week to figure out what I was going to do and start giving these free video samples away. So today is day number 71. My, I was telling a friend of mine, I, I'm in a board meeting this week. And I was kind of telling the story of how this all happened. And I, and, and I said, look, here's the deal. Uh, we produce three different things primarily. We have uh, the magazines, and they're reliant on advertising and subscriptions. And uh, advertising is the first thing most people cut in a recession. It's the silliest thing to do because you now have more attention than ever because First off, people are reading more, and secondly, <clears throat> you're not competing with so many people out there for ad space. And as a result, it's a, it's a better opportunity for you. I've actually increased my advertising since this happened, so that's the number one thing. Subscriptions, of course, are part of that. Subscriptions are up because readership is up. That's good. But advertising has been flat and moving down a little bit, being honest about that. Secondly, I'm in the events business. I do events for artists, and, and we also have an events business in our radio side of things. And so uh, our events, we've had to cancel, th uh, well, we've had to, we haven't canceled anything. We've had to postpone three different events now. And uh, so, um, and we, of course, don't know if we're going to be able to have them. We think we will. We've rescheduled them. We have dates. We have locations. But you just never know, right? So we are, and that's the lion's share of our business. And then we have a training business, which is essentially training artists on how to get better. And that, thankfully, has been holding its own. Not great, but it's holding its own. And what I decided to do at the beginning of this quarantine period, uh, about you know, 75, 77 days ago, I thought, look, I got nothing else to do. Businesses are you know, kind of hanging on. And so um, I thought, well, we'll just put samples out there, give people something to do. We'll put samples of our videos out there. And I got some resistance, quite frankly, because a couple of people said, look, you know, that's what people normally pay for. And I said, yeah, I know, but we're going to take the risk and we hope it'll be good for business. We hope that it'll actually stimulate some sales. We, help, we hope it'll help the artists, but if nothing else, it'll help everybody who needs something to do. And so... Uh, anyway, that is what we've been doing now, and it's been 71 days. Now, we've been doing this every day, giving you video samples every day, and now we're actually giving you two a day, and we're starting to repeat some of the things we've done before. We've created, it takes, takes eight to ten hours a day in editing time just to get these things ready, and so we have uh, started now repeating some of the things because we have to get back to, to work or we'll never make a living. And so, uh, and a lot of you, some of you have been watching every day. Some of you haven't had a chance to see them all. And so we're mixing it up. And we, we're putting them now at 3 p.m. Eastern, and we're putting them at 9 p.m. Eastern. And they're different at 3 and 9. So, like, tonight is a, a different one than what's today. And I'll tell you about those in a minute. And so the goal of that is to uh, give people in other time zones uh, a little bit uh, more better, uh, more better, right? There's my English coming out. A better opportunity, uh, more opportunity to uh, to see things at a time so they don't have to get up so early in the morning. Or We, we are now seeing a huge increase in viewership in Europe and viewership in, in Asia and Australia and New Zealand and, and uh, India and a lot of other places. And so that is a very cool thing for, for us. And we're meeting a lot of new friends, which is even better. And this is kind of cementing our arts community and all of you guys have have started coming in and there's a group of people who's who said you know when we we were going to take this away on on the 31st and we we're going to stop this but i just couldn't stop it there was a group of people who actually started a, a facebook group so they could continue to get together and chat every day so now they can chat uh there or they can chat 
with our, uh, our videos every day. But this is a nice opportunity. Those of you who are coming in here every day when I'm on at noon, you're, you're chatting back and forth, getting to know each other. I, I noticed that some of you are now communicating with people you don't know, introducing yourself, giving links, showing your work, and, and getting to know people in other places. And I'm excited. I got, uh, I got an invitation this week. I had to decline it, but I got an invitation to, uh, to uh, go to a plein air event in Germany. And interestingly enough, it was like in the same county or the same district as my nieces and nephews in Germany, which I don't get to see very often. And I thought, wow, that'd be really cool if I could do that. But unfortunately, I can't. I have some other plans, which you're going to learn about one of these days here soon. And uh, so, but I, and I, I, you know, I've been communicating with this guy in, I think he's in Saudi Arabia or, or Spain. I'm not sure. He's doing 3D printing of art products and he's showing me the cool things he's coming up with. Anyway, it's really been fun to communicate with and get to know new people. And so I hope you'll message me, get to know me. I'd like to get to know you. Make sure you put comments in because we're giving away prizes and we're grabbing people out of the comments. If you are from outside of the U.S., just put, you know, where you are in Canada or Mexico or New Zealand or wherever, and that will give us an opportunity to, um, to also give away prizes in, in outside of the U.S. And so we've got some prizes today and we got a lot of stuff today. Now I'm going to show you this. Now, I don't have any fancy graphics. But I'm going to show you the dinosaur and how to be, avoid becoming the dinosaur. You see, there is a very big danger that most artists put themselves into. And uh, that danger is going to turn you into a dinosaur. And it happens instantly. You know, they talk about how the dinosaurs just disappeared instantly. It was like an instant ice age. You know, one day there's a storm and next thing you know, everything's frozen and they're gone, right? So this is kind of going to be giving you some ideas on how to avoid extinction as an artist. And please know uh, you're backwards on YouTube. I apologize. I can't do anything about it. I don't know how to flip the camera and I just, sorry. Uh, but I finally figured it out on Instagram. And so give me another month or two. <laughs> I'm kind of a Luddite when it comes to technology. Actually, not too much so. So uh, anyway, we'll talk about that today. Now, I want to show you uh, a couple of paintings. First off, this is this lovely piece in our collection. Uh, I've been trying to show some things in our collection. And this is a lovely piece by Christine Lashley. And this is actually the piece she did for her video, Paintings That Sparkle. And I first learned about Christine Lashley from Scott Christensen, you know, the, the great artist, Scott Christensen, who said, I, I was on the phone with him one day and we were talking about fishing and painting and, you know, guy things. And, and, um, and I said, you know, who, who are you seeing that you really like their work? You know, somebody that I should be writing articles about. And he said, Christine Lashley, she is so good. And so I called, got to know her. And next thing you know, we're doing a video with Christine and it's become a, a very good seller. And so Christine Lashley is who you get today at 3 p.m. Uh, no, at, at 9 p.m. That's who you get today at 9 p.m. Christine Lashley, Paintings That Sparkle. Now, the other painting I want to show you, uh, this painting, this is also a jewel from my collection. Now, this is a scene, a landscape, that came out of the mind of the great Daniel Graves. Daniel Graves is the man who started the Florence Academy of Art over probably 28 years ago now. Um, and they teach the classical techniques, the old world techniques uh, of painting. And of course, there's been thousands of students through there and he has completely revolutionized the world. He and some, some other schools and Daniel's a good friend. And so I went over to Florence with a camera crew. Uh, note to self, don't check equipment on airlines. It's very expensive. So. Uh, anyway, we took a crew over, we took a bunch of equipment over, and, uh, and we shot a video with Daniel Graves in his personal studio, which was quite an experience. And I said, Dan, what I'd like you to do is to really show the entire process. You know, he, he likes to teach the way it was done four or 500 years ago. So when he paints, he grinds his own paint. 
he cleans and makes, he doesn't make, but he cleans his own oil. He has this process because, with, you know, the oil that you use, the medium that you use, uh, if you don't take care and do it properly, that medium will turn yellow and you'll get this yellow haze over your painting in 30,000 years or so. So <laughs> I don't know how long it takes, but so he cleans his oil. So his, not only does it make the, you know, like the most fluid, best medium to be using, but it also keeps it from turning yellow. So I said, look, I, I want to show the entire process. I want to show you making paint, grinding paint, how you do it, why you do it, how you get the consistencies, what you add to it. I want to show you cleaning the oil and what your process is, and I want the recipes. And uh, he said, well, I, you know, I've never kind of really given those out except to my students, but the, you know, if you get the video, you're his student, right? So today at 3 p.m., Daniel Graves is going to do a video on old world portraiture. He does a portrait of a guy. Uh, he goes through the entire process, the layers of paint and, and everything that you need to know, how he draws it and everything. And, and you'll really get a lot out of that. And so uh, this is a painting that Daniel Graves presented to me as a gift uh, following our week together there. And that was just such a generous gift. I don't think he wants one of my paintings. I'm just saying, right? Okay, wait, that's negative thinking. I know, I know. Uh, somebody's going to give me grief. So today we have some prizes. Uh, yesterday I announced... Yesterday I announced uh, that I was giving away three digital editions of Fine Art Connoisseur magazine. Uh, it's, uh, it's published bi-monthly. This happens to have Prince Charles... I announced yesterday that one of my goals is to meet and paint with Prince Charles. And I actually heard from somebody in England who said they might be able to help. But if you happen to know somebody, that would be really cool. That's just one of, one of the bucket list items. Anyway, you're going to get a digital copy. The digital copies, you know, you can zoom in on the images and, and uh, you know, you get that light behind them on your iPad or whatever. And it just gives you a lot of luminescence. And so... The three digital copies are going to Joan Green, and give thumbs up when you see here the winners so that they know you're applauding them. Joan Green from Ireland. Now, two days in a row we had an Ireland winner. So you guys in Ireland, thank you for watching. They have a great plein air event in Ireland. And I've, I've done a podcast, the plein air podcast. If you scroll back a few, I don't know, maybe a year ago or so, there is a, uh, an interview with some folks from, uh, from Ireland, some painters there, and they're talking about the movement. You know, the plein air movement has, has really been happening in America, but it's spreading. And uh, they told us that what we're doing here is spreading over there, and now they're spreading throughout Europe. So, uh, and, and it's spreading through China. It's spreading in a lot of places. <clears throat> and, and so we're really happy about that, of course. But uh, anyway, the podcast reveals a lot of their thoughts and some of the artists over there that I wasn't aware of who were just incredible and nice to Google them and find out about them. So anyway, uh, Joan Green from Ireland, Jennifer, it's dark in here, Jennifer mm, Eiheim, Artheim uh, in uh, <laughs> Nevada. Jennifer in Nevada, and Deborah Pruitt in Tennessee. So congratulations to, to you uh, three ladies. And uh, you will each get your own digital copy of Fine Art Connoisseur Magazine, a whole subscription. And today, I'm going to give away a different prize. Um, I have given away, I, I've started giving away multiple prizes every day, which is probably kind of stupid but since there's no business, but... Uh, today I'm going to give away my book, um, Make More Money Selling Your Art. These are the basic principles that every artist needs to be able to launch and build their art career. I do art marketing seminars at our plein air convention, at our figurative art convention. I have artmarketing.com. I teach marketing on video. I got a lot of stuff with marketing, but this is the foundation of it all. And uh, so tomorrow I'm giving away two copies of this book. We'll give away uh, one digital copy to Europe, uh, simply because that'll avoid the postage. And I, I shouldn't say Europe, outside of the United States. And then we'll give away one copy inside the U.S. So you can pick if you want digital or otherwise. I'm a digital guy. I like to, I've got, you know, my iPad is getting heavier because I have so many books in it. It's really tough. <laughs> and uh, 
I do like to read uh, regular books, but the problem is, you know, I lay in bed at night almost every night and read books. Um, you know, the one thing that all billionaires have in common, I'm, by the way, I'm not one, but the one thing all billionaires have in common is they all read one to two or more books a week. They actually take the time to read them. I try very hard to keep up with that. I, I don't always do that. But I got a bunch of books that I'm, I'm going back and forth from, and I read all kinds of variety from. I don't, I'm not a fiction guy. I read, you know, things that I can learn from that are very specific, you know, marketing books or, or books on, on things I'm trying to learn. I also do a lot of online learning. And uh, I'm a member of some online learning things and I take a lot of different classes and a lot of different things because I want to keep this thing, you know, working up there, keep the blood getting up there, keep it circulating so that I can stay as young as possible for as long as possible. All right. So uh, anyway, leaving comments is a good opportunity, but you don't have to just want to win to leave a comment. Now, um, I should mention to you that we are giving away this month, in the month of, of June, we're giving away a full attendance to the Plein Air Convention or to the Figurative Art Convention. On the website, it says it's like a, I don't know, $1,100 value and that's true if you wait till the very last minute but if you register earlier it's cheaper than that uh, so if you go to again my graphics are really hack if you go to streamline getaway uh, giveaway not getaway that's a good idea though uh, if you go to streamline that's my company name streamline it's streamlinegiveaway.com before June 30th and uh, enter your name and your, you know, your information, we will pull a winner uh, and give away. You get to choose whether you want to go to the face conference or the pace conference. Now, I got to tell you, I get a lot of grief because people are like, you shouldn't be holding your conferences. You should cancel your conferences. It's not safe. Look, I am not going to hold anything if it's not safe. And I, but I also have a lot of employees that I have to feed and I want to make sure that I can keep them employed. So I have scheduled dates and if the state or the city or the locale or whatever comes out and says, look, it's not safe or you can't have as many people or you have to wear, you know, masks or whatever we have to do at the time, then we will do that. Now, keep in mind that we just don't know until the last minute. Uh, and that's why we give 100% guarantee on these products. You know, if you you sign up for Face or Pace or Adirondack event that I did my painter's retreat, or if you sign up for uh, Fall Color Week or any of those things, if we re if we have to reschedule and you can't make it, then you can get a refund, right? So that's why we do that. So that you'll go ahead and, and do it. But please know we don't want to make anybody sick. And we're already starting to see some changes in the attitude about all of this. And, you know, now, now the, two weeks ago, they were saying there was going to be a resurgence. Now, some of them are saying there's not going to be a resurgence. I don't know who to believe. I want to believe the ones who say there's not, but I don't know who. I'm not going to be reckless. I'm not going to be uncareful. And we will not do anything to harm anybody. So, uh, and of course, you have to choose for yourself what's right for you. And uh, so, anyway, that's what's going on. Now, um, if you want to learn about the Figurative Art Convention or the Plein Air Convention, just Google those. Uh, I'm not going to show you those signs. If you want to follow, I would always appreciate it. My name is Eric Rhodes, and it's R-H-O-A-D-S, and the E goes in the front in Eric, not in the Rhodes. And... On Facebook, it's Eric Rhodes Publisher, or you can do my personal page, but I can't follow you back on the personal page because I am out of friends, all right? Now, our 3 p.m. every day, I have to say this because there's new people every day who stumble in. Um, I was stumbling a little bit last night. We went out to dinner, and I had a couple glasses of wine. That's something I haven't done in, like, months, and it's like, okay, it hit me a little harder than I expected. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so uh, if you want to find our videos, the daily samples at 3 p.m. and at, uh, tw at, at 9 p.m., you can go to YouTube or you can find them on Facebook at Streamline Art Video. That's the, the company, Streamline Art Video. And we're just a little bitty company. We're not this big, 
Behemoth, Behemoth Corp, Behemoth Corporation. So now what I'm going to do, I'm talk to you about extinctions. I'd like you all to draw your little dinosaur. Draw a circle and draw your little dinosaur and get your pens out and do that. Now, uh, those of you who are uh, seeing it backwards on YouTube, uh, draw, you can draw it backwards. That's okay. It won't matter. It doesn't really matter where you put the numbers. Okay. Uh, the other thing I want to say before I get started on this is that I got a note this morning from my office. There's a, a lady by the name of Sally. I won't use her last name because I, don't, I haven't got her permission. But Sally sent a note. And Sally, you know who you are. You can say it on the comments if, if you want to. And Sally sent us a really cool note. And here's what she said. She said, I've been watching these video samples every day. And I've been painting like mad. And I got six paintings completed during quarantine time. Thumbs up for Sally. And she said, the best part about it was that a friend commented that uh, she has taken a quantum leap in her painting. That is good news. And that's what happens. You know, I'm around all these artists. I, you know, I go to video shoots. I, you know, we, we do all this training. I'm around a lot of training. And just by being around it, by seeing it, by hearing it, uh, I see increases in, 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 my, in my painting. Now, the way you know it, by the way, is sometimes you can't see it yourself. But the way you find out is when you start getting unsolicited compliments. Like this lady, Sally, got one whose friend said, you've taken a quantum leap in your work. And I remember one time I, I spent um, a, a week with Joseph McGurl, and then I started just really practicing everything I learned and everything I learned. And all of a sudden, I was getting random compliments from people who I never, who never, usually they would have said, you know, nice colors or, well, you know, good, uh, nice, nice, uh, nice frame, <laughs> you know. So, but when, when people actually step up and say, who painted that? That's really good, you know, and then you say, well, I did. That, that's, uh, that's when you know you're making progress. And so that's a, a very positive thing. So the thing that's really cool about that is the fact that you are, uh, you're essentially learning and growing by, by watching these segments every day or by getting the videos and watching the whole thing. And sometimes watch them, you know, uh, two or three or four times because every time you pick up something different. And what I like to do, is I, I, have, I do it on my iPad, but I, I watch them on my iPad and I'll set up a canvas and I'll try to do the exact same thing. I'll try, try to paint along. Usually I watch it just the first time without doing that. And then the second time I'll sit there and I'll try to mix the same colors and I'll try to get it right. And our guys are really good about color correction. Uh, we've really spent a lot of time trying to get the colors right and get things absolutely super quality and so anyway that that will help you it's 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 something else i wanted to say and i posted this yesterday is that learning is never enough learning without action is just learning progress comes from learning and taking action in other words learning and practicing learning and taking that next step. You know, I'm doing a lot of art marketing kinds of things and, and, and giving you ideas. And, and yesterday I talked about a, a guy in, in the UK who said that, I, you know, the thing I did on confidence helped him. He took action. He did the things I suggested. He took action at a job interview and he got the job. Now he got the job. I didn't get him the job, but the fact that he took action, you, you know, if you sit around and, and learn, that's great, it's gonna help you, but if you take action, that's why at the plein air convention, the figurative art convention, we have uh, places for you to take action, right? So plein air convention, you learn during the day, and then part of the day we go out and we paint together, and the goal isn't just to paint, the goal is to implement what you learn. Now, my little trick, I don't know if you do this or not, but I always have a notebook, and I take the last page of my notebook. I just flip to the last page and I, I call it action steps. So if I'm on stage and I'm watching Kwong Ho or I'm watching Jewel Carver or Scott Christensen or somebody like that, then I will, uh, and they'll say something that I want to try, I'll go to, the, I'll, I'll write it down, I'll go to the back of my book and write it down and say, take an action on this. Then when I go out, 
I'll look at my action steps and I'll go, okay, I'm going to try that thing where he laid that color next to that color. That's where the growth comes. Because that, by doing that, you're cementing it, you're anchoring it into your system. Otherwise, I mean, how many times have you been to something, you've gone to a seminar, you've watched something online, and you don't remember it? You maybe remember this much of it. You know, you got all this, most people retain this much, but the minute you start practicing and putting it into actions, your retention goes up, all right? So now we're going to talk about the dinosaur, avoiding extinction. So what is extinction? Let me tell you a couple stories. Story number one is an artist friend of mine. Um, he had, he, he had this, this really well-known gallery contacted him. And they said, you know, we really love your work. We, we, we just really would like to carry you. Um, but what we'd like to do is a special show. And we'll do it two years from now. And we'll give you two years. Here's the kind of thing we want to feature. And here's what sells in our gallery. And so he put everything on hold. He worked on that show for two years, all the time. Got the show ready, worked on it, worked on it. Now, he stood to make a lot of money by selling, you know, a good percentage of the paintings in that show. About two weeks before the show, the guy that owned the gallery said, called him and said, we changed our mind, we're not going to do your show. Maybe it was a month before, before the promotions went up. And not only was he devastated, but he was counting on that income. You know, he had all, already mentally spent that money. And so he had everything relying on one thing, right? Remember, I've talked, to, it, 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 I've talked about the idea of the Parthenon, right? You got the Parthenon and you got all these different pillars. If you have one pillar as your income stream and that pillar falls away like that show did, the Parthenon comes crashing down, right? So that's one story. Second one is um, a friend of mine was making really, really good money. And he, I mean, really good money. Uh, he had a gallery that had been pumping it out. It's just like a printing press for money, just churning out money every year. And he didn't need anybody else. I mean, he didn't, he didn't need any more money. He was making all the money he needed. He didn't need anybody else. And I even said to him about two early, years earlier, are you really comfortable with your concentration risk? He says, what's that? I said, concentration risk is when you have everything concentrated in one particular area. He said, look, Eric, they've been in business for 30 years. They know what they're doing. They're established. They're stable. Everything's fine. And then all of a sudden, the owner called him one day and he said, I've decided to retire and I'm closing the gallery. I'm not selling it. I'm closing it. And this guy's income went from here to zero overnight, overnight. I mean, maybe he had three months notice or something, but he didn't have much notice. And that gallery, I mean, the, the guy could have sold it. He chose not to for whatever reason, but that gallery went away. Another friend of mine was in three galleries because uh, he's a pretty good friend and I always taught him about concentration risk. And I said, I think you need to be in three galleries minimum and I'd prefer five, but five is a lot to feed, but I think three galleries minimum. So he, he was smart and he did it. And, but the mistake he made, and I challenged him on this way before the mistake revealed itself, the mistake he made is that he said, I don't really want to be in any galleries that I can't go visit. I said, why? He said, well, you know, galleries, some galleries will rip you off. And, and I said, no, that's nonsense. I mean, just find good people, get references, find out they're good. And, and, and he says, yeah, but I don't want to have to ship paintings. And so he says, but I, you know, I can have some north of here and south of here and west of here and so on. I, you know, within a, a half day drive or to you know, whatever. And so he called me one day, and this was in 2008 or 2009 during the recession. And he said, I lost all three galleries. He said, all three galleries stopped selling. He said, they're not, one of them went out of business. Two of them haven't sold anything. And they haven't, and, and then they didn't sell anything for like two years. He had to pivot. He had to go quickly in another direction and figure out and scramble how to make money. So 
there's there, that's concentration risk. He, he, you know, that's a rarity. When you have a, an economic collapse event like that, that's a little harder to avoid. We're in one of those right now. Might last, might not last. Nobody really knows. But we know it's hurting people right now. So there's two kinds of concentration, probably a lot of kinds of concentration risk. But concentration risk could be having uh, not enough galleries. And, and I am going to go through, maybe that's even a problem. The other thing is concentration of regions, right? So like there are, um, there are regions that are hot and there are regions that are not. We had a guy named Ed Turpening on our stage at the plein air convention in art marketing boot camp one time. And he talked about how he developed this international audience uh, and he was selling paintings in Asia. And, uh, you know, this was during the recession and, you know, he wasn't selling much here, but everybody's spending money like crazy in Asia and he was selling all the paintings he wanted. I remember there was a time when, uh, you know, like Silicon Valley is really hot and people are spending money. And there was another time when like Silicon Valley died. And so if you had all of your uh, income coming out of Silicon Valley, imagine if you were an artist and you had all your income coming out of Detroit. I mean, you know, Detroit did a, a deep dive. Now it's coming back. But what you want to do is spread your concentration risk. You want to have, if, if you're doing galleries, then you want to have, I want to have a gallery maybe in the Midwest or a gallery in the South or a gallery in the East, a gallery in the West. Now, I have a, a, a saying that I've used, you've heard me say it before, and that is stand in the river where the money is flowing. Stand in the river where the money is flowing. And what that means is go where the money is, right? And you've got to be willing to pivot. So if you're in a gallery in a market that's just not selling, then you've got to pivot and go to a market that is selling. Doesn't mean you have to pull out of that gallery. Those paintings might sit there for two or three years and not give you any income. So how do you do that? Well, the key to that is being ready, right? Uh, and the key to being ready is being known, building your brand, making sure they know who you are, and also developing relationships in advance. So um, anyway, I'm gonna go through the dinosaur for you here. Um, Oh, I wanted to tell you one other concentration risk story. Is another friend of mine had uh, had a patron, and um, this guy was making money from this patron. The patron happened to be a billionaire, and this billionaire absolutely loved this guy's work, and so everything he produced, he bought it. Everything, it just it was just like an automatic. I'm going to do a painting. The guy's going to buy it. And then the guy started commissioning things. He started commissioning, he had a lot of friends. And so he thought, I want portraits of my friends. And so he started commissioning this friend and that friend. And, and they were beautiful, beautiful portraits. And so this guy's making all of his money from this fat cat billionaire. And guess what happened? Guy disappeared. All of a sudden, he just disappeared. I, I don't know why he disappeared. I don't know if he went out of business. I don't know if he, uh, if he lived or died. I don't know if he moved. I don't know if he was sick. I, I don't know any of the details. All I know is that he stopped buying. Maybe he got mad at the artist. I don't think that would have been the case. But So you have lots of different kinds of concentration risk that you need to figure out how to avoid. So then we have the dinosaur. And I see if I can find my notes on the dinosaur because I can't seem to find them. Oh, here, here we go. Nope. All right. So essentially what you want to do is you want to take your dinosaur and you want to say, okay, if this pie chart dinosaur is my income. So the dinosaur eats, dinosaur eats, and then the dinosaur poops, right? And I don't know why I said that, but the idea is the dinosaur is eating. This is your income. This is how you eat. So right now, let's say that whole circle is filled up with one art gallery or one collector or one person who, who loves your work. So if, if you wanted to say, okay, one way to look at this is say, okay, I need to have, you know, five art galleries, but I don't really believe that. 
You see, I believe that you should be in control of your career at all times. We want to, we, it, there's a difference between delegating and advocating. And you don't want to advocate. So here's the problem. We say, okay, I got an art gallery. They're sending me money. I'm sending them paintings. I don't have to do anything else. That's great until it's not great. And then once you get a problem, well, then you got a real problem. I'm going to turn the light up because this, the window light went a little crazy. So you, what, I, what I think you want to do is you want to have one is you want to have a gallery or you want to have galleries. So you, you don't want more than 20% of your income to come from any one of these five places. So one of those would be galleries. What would be another one? Another one would be teaching, right? A lot of artists are teaching. So teaching might be workshops, online training, doing videos with us, you know, that kind of a thing that might be teaching. So now you've got your concentration risk a little bit spread. I mean, even if you had that 50-50, that'd be better than having it all in one place. So what you want to do is ask yourself, what are the things that fit into these boxes that I could do? So another one might be commissions, right? So, okay, now I'm going to concentrate. I'm going to try, let's say I'm making, this is, let's say this is 50,000 a year and each of these boxes is 10,000. So I got to get, I got to focus on how do I get $10,000 in business from a gallery and I, how do I get 10,000 from training and how do I get 10,000 from commissions, right? And so those are the kind, that's the kind of thinking. So you can fill in your boxes. Now, I think that there is, um, there's one that would be called other. That's an O. And other would be uh, looking for new opportunities in things like the gift market, the print market. Now that's controversial for some people, but uh, or the licensing market. So I have a, a friend who makes a decent amount of money every year from licensing. They put his picture uh, paintings on coffee cups and mugs and calendars and funeral books and you name it. And every time they do that, he gets a check. You know, they, they sell prints, he gets a check. And so, um, you know, you want to have that divided up. So maybe you've got a gallery, you got teaching, you got commissions. What else could be on there? Who else has got a suggestion? Anybody from, from the comments on there? I don't know if YouTube is commenting today or not. Um, the comments might have been disabled. So really warm today in Houston. We'll have to rewatch. Okay, you're just coming on board. So what you want to do is look at your concentration risk, figure out what's going to go into your box. So it might be galleries, it might be teaching, it might be, uh, oh, the other one I was going to put in here is direct selling. All right, so I have a friend who, who um, has a deal, when he gets a deal with a gallery, he says, look, anything under this size or anything under this price I'm going to sell that direct. I'm going to put that out into the daily painting market. And so he's got, uh, and he puts a, he sells a painting every day, and that is one of his boxes. So uh, I don't want to put my career in the hands of anyone, including an agent. I mean, agents are wonderful if you can get an agent, but the agent should be in charge of one segment of your career. You never want to advocate the whole thing because if you do, you lose control. So your dinosaur, you need to figure out what is my dinosaur and how do I get there? Now, it seems impossible, but the one thing that's very important is to put a number on everything. And, you know, you might not do that in your first year, but you might say, okay, today I'm making $10,000 a year in gallery sales. I'd like to increase that, that's okay. I want to increase it to 15,000. And then you say, okay, within two years, I want to fill each of these blanks with 15,000. Think how much that'll elevate your income. So you say, okay, how do I sell 15,000 in direct, direct, uh, direct selling online or whatever? And keep in mind that if you're doing direct selling, there's a whole 
thing you've got to be careful about with your galleries because you've got to communicate with them. You don't want to violate that relationship. But if you're doing direct selling as one of your pieces, then you, instead of saying, well, I want to get some more direct selling. No, you can't say more. You cannot write more onto a deposit slip. Define more. You know, can imagine go to your bank and, and you say, uh, all right, I'm going to write, I'm going to write a deposit slip for, and I'm going to write on here more. No, more doesn't work. So you got to set a number in your head. If you have a number in your head, you're more likely to hit it. So if you say, this year I'm concentrating on getting $15,000 in direct sales, and I'm going to concentrate on getting $15,000 in, in other sales, I'm going to concentrate on getting $15,000 in commissions, and $15,000 in teaching, and $15,000 in galleries. And then each year you look at it and you say, how did I do? And actually, you should look at it every quarter or every month. How did I do? And, well, I'm getting closer here, but I need to really spend my time boosting that one. This one's doing really, really well. I'm going to make sure I service that one, but I'm going to work on growth on this one. And, you know, you can't necessarily do it all at one time. So you pick and choose what you're going to do. But if, imagine if your total income were 10000 or yeah, 10000 and now you were doing 10000 in each of these categories. Now you have 50000 This is how to grow and amplify your art business. So you don't want to become a dinosaur because you will become extinct the minute somebody pulls the plug on you if you have too much concentration risk. Make sense? Okay, so I want to remind you today, uh, prizes that you can win. Number one, you can go to paintinggiveaway.com. We're going to be giving away in the month of June. You only need to go there one time. Uh, we're going to be giving away either a full admission to the plein air convention or the figurative art convention. Baltimore in, in uh, October, plein air convention, Santa Fe in, in uh, July, uh, July, August, 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 sorry. Um, that's number one. Number two is we're giving away two copies of the art marketing book, one inside the U.S., one outside the U.S., and that's from comments. Uh, we will grab a comment randomly. Number three, uh, remember that today, I'm first off, I'm here every day at 12 noon. I'm going to be moving up to a little cabin in the woods where the internet is a little spotty, so you may have to bear with me for a couple days till I get that figured out. But um, anyway, 3 p.m. every day, we have a video sample. Today, we have Daniel Graves' Old World Portraiture, and 9 p.m. every day, today we have... Christine Lashley and Paintings That Sparkle. Yeah. And uh, remember to share this with your friends, especially if you know somebody who's got concentration risk and you think, you know what? This is something they need. You've probably got it all figured out already. I'm not telling you anything new. I know that I've done this. Uh, I had a concentration risk. I have a, a radio publication. Uh, called Radio Television Business Report. I acquired it from the founder, Jim Carnegie, who passed away. And uh, before he passed away, uh, we talked about all the business. And uh, he said, I've got two accounts that make up 80% of the income. Two accounts. And uh, he said, I think I'll be able to maintain those. I'll, I'll make sure they sign a contract. Well, I bought the business anyway, and I, I knew that that was risky. Um, but as soon as he left and then eventually died, uh, we lost those accounts. First off, one of them completely went out of business. Couldn't help that one. The other, it was about a relationship that they had. They had a good relationship. They liked him. They supported him. We didn't have that relationship. We couldn't keep that account. So all of a sudden, we had a business that 80% of the business disappeared overnight. And we even knew it was coming, but we didn't solve it fast enough. You have a chance to solve it. Anyway, I'm Eric Rhodes with Fine Art Connoisseur and Plein Air Magazine, plus Fine Art Today, Plein Air Today, Realism Today, and American Watercolor. Those, are all, those last ones are newsletters. They're free. And also remind you that I have a newsletter that I do, a blog, every Sunday. It's called Sunday Coffee. And I do it for free, and I don't know how many people are reading it now, but last number I heard was a quarter million people. So that's pretty cool. Um, 
And it has, sometimes it has to do with art, but it's usually just stuff that I wanted, lessons that I wanted to pass on to my kids. That's why I started writing it. And somehow it resonates with some people and they like to pass it on. And next thing you know, it grows. So if you've not seen it, you can find it. You can either Google Sunday Coffee with Eric Rhodes. That's an R-H-O-A-D-S. Or you can just go to coffeewitheric.com and you can sign up. It'll come to you free every week. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm going to go back to my board meeting now. Have a great day. Bye. I'm going to figure out how to end that one. There we go. Bye, guys. I don't think we're supposed to be on here still.